Greetings and welcome back to Photo Justice Photo Moment. This is the Q&A portion for the show we just did talking about the very cool long exposure mode that you have built into your iPhone. I think it's from seven up, uh, seven and above, the ability to shoot the long exposure mode. Basically, if you've got an iPhone that does live photos, then you can do the long exposure thing. So super cool. If you missed the video, go watch that. But now we're in the Q&A, ask whatever you'd like to ask. And the first question I already see up here is from Mr. Burns Tech. Oops, that's the wrong button. Is from Mr. Burns Tech saying, I missed a small chunk of the show. Are these videos you shot on this and the software on the phone takes care of the rest? So they're not videos, they're live photos. On the iPhone, you have the live photo mode, which is basically a short video, but you are just taking pictures and it is recording, call it a, a second to two seconds before and after you press the shutter. The live, the live photo things are really, really fun. It's, it is a super cool thing. Um, lots of neat modes you can play with in here, but it's great. You know, you have to capture that moment of your kid and then you find out that you actually have a couple seconds. It's very kind of Harry Potter-like what you get out of it. Uh, let's see, are there any other questions? I don't really imagine there's gonna be a whole lot of questions going on today, but if there's anything that you, uh, you do wanna know, it doesn't have to be this iPhone thing related, now's your chance. Make sure you put at photo just in front of it. Um, Oliver is asking, you like how the, you, you like, I like, he likes, how I produce the show. Thank you. What software are you using? Oh, my friend. I will link right here to a show that I did about this setup. It is not software. It is hardware related. It is kind of ridiculous. It's kind of overkill, but I do a lot more than just this show with this production. So there's a hardware switcher from Blackmagic. What you're seeing, the switching that you're seeing happening is on an iPad. This is just an interface to the Blackmagic hardware switcher. Um, it's monstrous, and I will link to that um, up there. So if, for you watching live, come back later and look for it, or, um, or you can just search. I think the video is called How I Stream. I think that's what it is. How I Stream a Professional Studio, something like that. But we'll, we'll link to it up there. Uh, Matthew says, what's the best way to set up the G9 to get the same effect? Oh, that's a great question. Okay. So any camera, G9 or any camera, any DSLR, DSLM, what you're doing, what this effect is, and just in case anybody's going, what, what, what effect? Um, we're talking about this. This long exposure effect where you get anything that's moving becomes blurred. Anything that is static is not blurred. So to do this with a regular camera, you need a couple of things. You need a tripod, number one. Absolutely super critical. That camera cannot move. I mean, you could you know, balance it on a tabletop or a rock or something if you have it steady, but the camera's got to be solid. If it moves at all, then the stuff that is supposed to be still is gonna be blurry. So you gotta do, you gotta have a tripod or some stabilization. Then you need a long exposure. And how long that exposure is going to be will depend on what you're shooting. Something like this, the rushing water, I mean, you could get a little bit of misty water over maybe a, a half second to a second long exposure. If you really wanna have, you seen those where it, it almost looks like it's fog on the water, it's such a long exposure. Those could be a couple of minutes long. So then you're thinking, well, hold on a second, how am I supposed to shoot a, you know, 30 second long exposure in the middle of the daylight. Well, that's where you need the neutral density filter. So neutral density filter is a filter you put in front of the camera that reduces the amount of light coming in. And you want a big one, like an eight stop ND filter that is going to reduce the amount of light coming in dramatically. You're probably gonna stop the lens down still even more. And then finally, and shoot at a really low ISO. And then finally, you're gonna be able to get a long enough exposure to get that effect. And then of course, again, going back to the tripod, it's gotta be static because otherwise it's going to move. Now there is another way to do it. Um, I actually covered this in my um, low light, let me bring this up here, um, in my low light photography course on lynda.com. There's a course that I have on lynda.com called Shooting in Low Light. You can get to it just by going to photojustfit.com slash lynda low light. That'll redirect you. And uh, incidentally, if you're not a Lynda subscriber, you can get a 10-day free trial photojustfit.com slash lynda. And in this low light course, I talk about star trail photography. And it's the same idea where you have a long exposure, but instead of having one very long exposure, you have uh, a series, potentially hundreds, of normal still photos that you then blend together in software. Very, very cool technique. Uh, this is especially useful if you want really long exposures because you can't really do super long exposures on the camera. The sensor tends to heat up and get really noisy. So you don't want to do, and I, don't, I think 30, 30 seconds, I think, is the kind of cutoff without going into bulb mode. When you go into bulb mode, you have to have a, a shutter release to hold the, the uh, shutter open for a really long period of time. And you don't want to go too long, and I don't, want to, I don't know what the limit is. It probably depends on your camera. But uh, things will get noisy as the sensor tends to heat up. So if you're going to do, let's say, an all-night-long star trail photo, 
then you're going to definitely want to do it where you're shooting multiple pictures. So check that course out. It's uh, that's pretty cool. Um, so that was a very long answer to your question, but hopefully that was useful. And maybe I'll do a whole show on that one day because it is it is super fun stuff. Uh, let's see here. Other questions. Burn Tech says, <clears throat> search PhotoJustice channel for my YouTube live broadcast setup. Oh, thank you. Talking about the, the video to search for. Thanks for that. Matthew says, could you do this in the high resolution mode on the G9? Um, starting to, I'm trying to make huge prints for the plain walls I have. Let me think. High res mode is limited in the duration. Um, let me grab my G9 and I will we'll see what that is because I don't remember exactly what that is, but I'm pretty sure. Does this thing have a battery in it? Oh, it does. I'm pretty sure that in the high res mode, there is a limit to how long the exposure could be. Oh yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Um, that makes perfect sense because you can't, um, right? You can't have a long exposure because it's taking nine photos in a very rapid succession. So you can't do a long exposure. So the longest is going to be quite fast. Let me just see what it is. Uh, so you would have to do it by taking multiple photos and blending them together. So let's see here. Um, if I put this into high resolution mode. Start high resolution mode. Let me go into manual and one second, which is pretty long still. Okay, so I can do one second long, which means it's actually going to take nine seconds to capture. Um, That's really interesting. I want to see what happens here. Let me see if I can't get the exposure dark enough to make it not be a crappy photo, but but that's okay. I just I'm curious now. Can you hear it? Those are definitely less than a second. No, I guess they're a second apart. Yeah, this is a second part. Okay. So now it's creating a high res image shot in a total of nine frames over the period of nine seconds. Uh, so, you know, again, tripod necessary. Uh, that'd be interesting to see how that would turn out. It'd be very interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and if you wanted longer than a second, then you would have to, uh, you would have to uh, blend them together manually. <laughs> Great question, though. Really, really good question. Um, so let's see here. Uh, what else is up? Uh, Ricardo says, "What is the difference in terms of end result between two between the two long exposure modes using an ND filter for ten seconds or merging ten seconds worth of photos?" <clears throat> okay, let's say that you've done a star trail, and the star trail is moving quite quickly. I don't know, move quickly. I don't know. Your 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 exposure is short enough that between exposures, there's a gap in the stars you're going to actually see a series of dots across the the sky instead of a long trail. When the shutter is open, you capture every bit of movement. When you're shooting a sequence, that gap between photos is an actual gap in time of what's captured. So depending on how fast things are moving, you may not actually have a smooth blur. And I'm pretty sure in that Linda video, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that in that one, I had exactly that problem with the stars. And so when I blended it all together, you had a little bit of stuttering between them. And so the way that I resolved it was a radial blur filter because the stars were in an arch. Or it was quite a wide field view of the sky. Uh, the stars were in an arch and I blurred them with a radial blur, just a tiny bit, just enough to pull those together and then mask that out from the mountain that was in the foreground. I'm almost positive that that's part of that video, of course. So yeah, check out that Linda Low Light thing. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's definitely something that's covered in there. So there you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, anything else coming up here? No other questions coming up on the chit chat right now. Um, I guess that's about it then. So cool. Thanks for those excellent questions. That is superb. And I think now that now you've inspired me, I want to go out and see if I can do a high resolution photo with the G9. I'll put on an ND filter, take a tripod, I'll head down to, well, not back into Socha Valley because that's far away. But I can go to my local little mini waterfall here and, uh, and do it there. Fantastic. Thanks so much for the suggestion. Um, oh, okay, another question about Matthew says, how hard would this be with macro photography, i.e. bugs? Well, your bugs would be blurry, right? So that's probably not what you want. The bugs would be moving, and unless you're trying to make the bugs disappear, right? The whole point of a long exposure where you have people in the shot is to make the people either disappear or become an unrecognizable blur, which can be a great effect, right? If, you, if you're taking a picture of uh, you're traveling somewhere and you've got this beautiful cathedral or whatever in front of you, and it's like, oh, it's great, but there's all these freaking tourists, um, you know, you, you can't exactly say, hey, everybody get out of the way and get a clean shot without them. But, you know, when you remove the human element, that isn't necessarily so interesting either. 
but you don't want to see all the people exactly because they're distracting and maybe if you're going to use it for commercial use and now you got these people's faces, you got to worry about releases and all that. So if you do a really long exposure and all the people blur together like the sample that I showed you on the iPhone, um, and if you didn't see that, then of course you need to watch the original video from this, then, um, then that what happened, you get this really cool blur of people, you're showing that there's people there but they're not identifiable and they're not distracting. So for bugs, uh, Matthew's saying insect wings, that could be... You, for an insect wing, you would, you absolutely, you could have a, a slightly longer exposure. I mean, those things beat so fast that even a, like even a sixtieth of a second exposure, you're probably going to get some pretty good motion blur on the wings. I mean, if you go too long, they'll completely disappear, right? Let's just say that you could, you couldn't, but let's just say that you could have a, a bug hovering in exactly the right spot or staying on the ground perfectly still, but flapping its wings really fast. Well, flapping its wings, and you were made, you managed to do like a five second exposure. Those wings would virtually disappear, and then that wouldn't look right either. You're like, what happened to the wings? You cruel son of a! You can't do that, right? So you got to have find the right balance where th you get the blur to show that there's movement, but not so much blur that it completely disappears. And the only way to figure it out is to experiment, because every subject's going to be different, and that's part of the fun of this sort of thing. Alrighty, um, all right, I think that's it. Cool. Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in today. That was that was a lot of fun. Hope that was interesting and educational for you. Um, I, it's amazing what this thing can do, right? So I, I am going to go out and shoot something on the G9 at the waterfall. So I think that's a fantastic question. So thanks for that. Tune in next week for the answer to that one. I'm, I might try and go do that this weekend. And uh, other than that, have yourselves a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.